G'day guys, Dom here. So in this video we're making a few of these. This is a new design I'm working on. At the moment I'm calling them the D6, but I'm not sure about the name yet. This is sort of like a trial batch just to see how it goes, how people like it, how well they sell. And if they go well, I'll make more. But anyway, let's get started. So this is ABL stainless steel. Good shit. Uh, it's very fine grain stuff, which is really what I like. And it is very difficult to get the stuff to rust. You definitely notice when you acid etch this stuff because it does not want to etch. And I'm just using PVA glue because it's the shit. And it also makes me feel like I'm back in kinder, so that's all good. Anyway, super simple, just glue the shit on. Do this, I'm just gonna use an angle grinder. Pretty basic. You wanna move it quite a bit, you don't wanna stay in one spot because then it'll get too hot. And also with an angle grinder, you want to be careful that you don't kind of, uh, you don't slip. Because that's bad in two ways. Firstly, if you slip, you break a disc, it goes in your leg, you've had a real bad day. Second thing you really don't want to do, is you don't want to kind of slip and skid over your workpiece. That's not good, because if I skid here and scratch the fuck out of all three of these, that's either a lot of surface grinding, which is no good, or a redesign, or I just scrapped a bit of steel. Depends. But anyway, just be careful and don't fuck it up. All right, so we're ready for grinding. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that I've actually, uh, I've had to redo the stencils on these. I wasn't thinking, so when I went to uh, surface grind these, I actually surface grind the stencils off them. And yes, that is about as stupid as it sounds. But no big deal, we just made some new ones and uh, glued it up and we're ready to grind.
Looks good to me. Ready for drilling. Actually, one of these could be a little on the piss. Yeah, this one is a little on the piss. So, just move it over a hair. Much better. So, we've got the handles nicely drilled out. Got a bunch of extra holes in there, just drop weight really. And now it's time to grind these damn things. So, we got our blades all nicely grind. Uh, these two came out nicely, nice even grind, nice and symmetrical, nice fine grit, everything's even, no dramas. This one was a bit of a cunt. Uh, I had some problems with this. I had to actually break out the files and sandpaper just to get it all even, which I don't usually have to do too much, but every now and then, you know, you're not in your game and you are, you sort of, kind of, sort of fuck something up. But it's okay, fixed now. And now what we're going to do so we're going to add this little sharpening notch here to these two. So the trick to getting these things as even as possible is good layout because it's very hard to get things even if you can't see what the hell you're doing and for this I think I'm going to go with five notches
So, these are not actually the blades you saw me making. These are actually blades from uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, the ones you saw me before are now off at Heat Treat, and I just picked these up yesterday. So, essentially, we're coming to a cooking show with a uh, here's what I prepared earlier kind of deal going on. What we're going to do here is we're going to scribe these things out to try and get the most amount of our material. Because while G10 isn't too expensive, I don't want to go through it too quickly. So just clamp it down. Usually use smaller clamps, but they're on the other side of the workshop and I'm lazy. Alright, so we're back. Off camera, I glued on some uh, G10 liners, mainly because it looks cool. So yeah, had to wait for that to dry. Anyway, now we've got to go and actually fit these damn handles. And not have a clamp in the way, apparently. Okay, so the handles are all nicely fit up, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the grinder, and you'll see me basically just rip off all this extra material here. I'm going to run pretty fast, because all this material, it's not doing any good, it's just in my way. So, the quicker I can get this away, the better. So, uh, I think this is a 36 grit belt. Yeah, 36 grit. Fairly high speed, fresh belt, and I'm just going to rip this shit off real quick. Uh, after that, you're going to see me basically thin these all out, get them under the same thickness, and texture them, sand them, and pattern them. As soon as this thing starts grinding G10, that respirator, this respirator over here, is going to go on because this shit is horrible stuff to do.
Okay, so the handles have been sanded and off camera I actually did the blade finish on these guys. I didn't film it because it's uh, it's really dusty work, it's hard to film, it's not great for the camera. And honestly, it's not all that interesting, so uh, yeah, I just did it off camera. And uh, now all we have to do is put the maker's mark on there. I'd say that looks good to me. It's in the right spot. Okay, so now we're pretty much in the final stretch. I've got all these handles done. I don't think I've shown them yet, but you've got all these like different colors there. I've got a blue and black one. I did a whole bunch of different patterns and textures and shit on these. I've also bead blasted them as well, so they've got a bit of grip to them. Anyway, it's time to install these damn things. So to make sure these damn things don't come apart, or at least to stop them just vibrating open or something, I uh, used a dab of Loctite. The blue stuff, it's the way to go. Even this is probably too much. You don't want to overdo it with the Loctite. Because in theory, you can have a situation where it's so Loctited in. That's not a word, but you can have a situation where it's so in there that you're not going to get it out with that serious force. Okay, so knives are done, sheaths are done. And the final thing is just put an edge on these things. So I ground these really thin by the edge. So uh, I'm not actually going to do all of my edge on the grinder, if that makes sense. I'm just going to do the tips a little bit because I uh, don't know if you can see on camera, but... The tips in these are just a little bit thicker than the main part, so uh, just to cut down the time on the water stones, I'm going to sharpen up the tips in these. And we are done. So I did all of these a little bit differently, you know, just to mix it up a little bit. And mainly, you know, just to give me a chance to play around with them a bit and uh, come up with something interesting. So uh, I guess we'll have to do this one at a time because if I did them all at once, like this camera would shit its pants. Like it would never focus on it. It'd, it'd be a whole thing. So uh, yeah, one at a time. I guess we'll start with this one. So uh, this one here. It's got a fold-over sheath. I don't typically do my sheaths folded over this way, uh, mainly because I like the two sets of eyelids. I think it looks cool. And it's also a little bit tougher to get a good retention on there. And just, you know, a variety of things I don't like it as much. But for these, I figured it was more appropriate because these are, you know, designed primarily as everyday carry fixed blades. So to try and make it a little bit more compact, I did it that way. But we'll see, like maybe in the next few, I'll do it the old fashioned way. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, good retention. Got a nice solid click, that's what you want. So yeah, this one's got a sort of a, almost a full size grip. Well, for me it is, because I got like a medium size to large size hand. But I mean, these are primarily designed to be everyday carry fixed blades. So I wanted to keep these as compact as possible. And that's not really possible to have like a handle that comes out to here. So try and keep it compact, not too big of a handle. I mean, there's some tricks you can do to make it feel bigger than it really is. But yeah, nice and slim, easy to carry. If you live in a state or in a country that lets you uh, do inside the waistband carry, this would definitely work well for that because it's just so narrow. And I actually ground these really thin behind the edge. I spoke to a couple makers on the weekend and they convinced me to really thin up my geometry a bit. I mean, it definitely wasn't thick before, but like this stuff right now, it's a freaking lightsaber. I took it down to 0.25 mil. I think that's what I measured it out to. 
there's no reason to have a knife thicker than it needs to be because it just gets in the way it slows your cut down and the less material you have to wedge into a cut the better pretty much i mean it, it is a sacrifice of strength but these aren't sharpened pry bars these are made to cut and to cut for a really long time i mean i do leave the tips on these a little bit thicker just because you know these are everyday carry knives so any point that will be damaged will probably be the tip like if you drop it or something or if you're cutting through something and accidentally stab it into a brick wall that's probably what's going to happen we cut into a staple with it so it makes sense to have a slightly thicker tip but the main body here is nice and thin because that's not as likely to be damaged and that's where you really want it to be nice and sharp anyway in my experience and i absolutely suck cutting paper like i obviously failed kindergarten but uh yeah nice and sharp all of them are really sharp i cut the shit out of a tomato when i was testing these so good little knives nice and small uh let's do this one next so same deal this one actually happens to have a sheath that you can actually fire this one's got a, a rock pattern on the handle which is something i don't typically do in g10 but it came out nicely and this has got a nasa sandwich finish as well all the maker's marks in these are uh, distressed. Often I do a very in-your-face maker's mark, but it's kind of nice to do something a bit more subtle from time to time. Especially in something like this. I didn't want it to overpower the whole knife, this big black mark on the blade. This one's got purple liners. It's not really a color I use a lot purple, but it's nice when I can. Gives a cool of a, uh, a more of a uh, refined look, let's say. And this one's got distressed and bronzed uh, hardware. Just as a nice accent. So yeah, I think that's everything about this knife. The retention, rounded edges on all of them. And the last one, my personal favorite because I like colors, is a blue and black laminated handle. Or laid handle. I think it, I think it's sold as layered. I keep on getting it mixed up, but um, blue and black laid handle, heavily sandblasted and bead blasted again for that nice effect, that nice texture. And the reason I like blue and black is because nobody ever really asks for it. I have one sheet that I ordered in for a customer last year and I've made one knife with that. So every now and then it's nice to pull that stuff out and do really cool little things. So on this one I actually added black liners there just to widen up a little bit so you have something more to hang on to. And I also just rounded the handle just to give a, you know, bring out the full effect of the laid handle. Again, nice and small, rounded spine on all these, rounded off in here. Basically everything that doesn't have to be sharp has been rounded off just make the whole knife more comfortable so yeah black hardware there to go with the black liners i think that's a lot i'm sort of running out of things to say but yeah we've got all three of these done hope you guys like them and i'll see you on the next video